Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. It's time to finally upgrade our EU power system. For real this time. Uh, before that, one quick thing I want to do is I was running into an issue where this magma crucible was no longer able to output any of its magma to this fluid tank. And after messing around with, for a while and trying a bunch of different things, I realized the problem was that this tank was actually, after it had been emptied of, of all its lava, it was getting filled up with a little bit of water. Because of the fact that these two pipes, this is the water line, that's the lava line, were connected both here. So the water, after this had been emptied, the water was going through here and not just going here, but it was also going all the way through and going into here. So that was a problem. Worse? I must have, oh, I accidentally broke the lever. Not sure how that happened. Anyway, that should output the lava. Um, yeah, so the way to fix that, since we kind of have to tie the pipes up, since there's only one entrance here for fluids, they do have to connect. So I think the best way to deal with it is to use a fluid router, which was actually added in one of the updates for immersive engineering that I installed. This did not exist in the game when I was playing before the update. So I don't know how you'd solve it in that, in that case. I guess you'd just be <laughs> kind of screwed. I don't know. But thankfully it exists, and it does the exact same thing as the item router, except for fluids. Um, so this way is east. So the east way is where we want lava and water to go and nowhere else. So this one. Lava goes east, and water goes east. And that way we shouldn't get any cross flow. This thing should empty now. Yep, it's going in. And it's empty. A little bit hard to tell whether it's working. I mean, I guess it's not filling up with water, so it's probably fine, but we'll see in the future if there's any problems, but I'm pretty confident that that worked. I mean, this thing obviously got the lava, it got the water, so it is routing it through. Not really a lot that can go wrong with this. Yeah, pretty cool device. Okay. So, let's look at some of the stuff we're going to do for upgrading the EU power system. So, first thing I want to do is I'm tired of dealing with rubber. For EU stuff, you have to use tons of rubber all over the place. So, you know, the way I did that in the past is using the tree tap and going to find holes in trees and then tapping them and the tree tap breaks super fast and the resin just goes flying out a million miles per hour in some random direction and then teleports after landing so you don't really know where it went and it just kind of sucks. So if you look at rubber, there's actually a bunch of different ways to, to get it. The way I've been doing is getting the sticky resin by tapping and then just smelting that. Um, but the other main way of getting it is actually processing the wood itself, the rubber wood. So if you put the rubber wood in an extractor, it'll give you a bit of rubber. So I think that's the way I'm going to do it. The other way you can also do it is with, um, I don't see it listed here, but there's something car called an arboreal extractor from thermal expansion, which I believe you just put it at the base of a tree, of a rubber tree, and it just very, very, very slowly extracts resin or something. So I could do that, but I've heard it is extraordinarily slow, and I'm looking to upgrade my power system now, not like two weeks from now. <laughs> so I'd rather just do this. So let's make an extractor. I've already got one um, over there, the rock hounding stuff. It's taking in the gunpowder to make the whatever it makes. I forgot. So let's make another one. I'm going to set that up somewhere just temporarily, I guess. All right, I just plopped the extractor down here and replaced the electric furnace, because the electric furnace, as far as I know, is completely pointless at this point. Now that I have a double furnace over there, I don't think the electric furnace can do anything that it can't, and it does it way faster. So I just got a bunch of rubber wood. Let's see how this thing works. Let's hope it's not good. So it's not using up more power than I can supply it, so it's not gonna turn super slow. And I think, yeah, I've got some overclocker upgrades. Let me see if I can plop some of these in without it drawing too much power. Alright, so that's too much, but one is okay. 
Okay. And that should make me uh, about a stack of rubber. Oh, I've also got some uranium. Cool. Right, well, while the rubber's going, I'm gonna prep some other stuff. Alright, at this point I think I'm mostly waiting for rubber to process to be able to get all of the transformer upgrades that I need. But I did manage to get two of them, which is... Uh, which is enough to get one of these machines up to the proper tier. So, let's do away with basically all this garbage. So, bat box, nope. LV transformer, nope. MV transformer, nope. Okay, shouldn't need any transformers anymore. Oh Christ, there's so many things I don't even have room for that. Alright, let's... Uh, hmm... I may have just made a huge mistake. <laughs> I wanted to turn that thing around. What I don't know is... Okay, okay, whew! It keeps the storage. Hmm... Okay, it keeps most of it, but it looks like it does lose some when you break it. Anyway, it's fine. I want the power output on this side. By the way, fun thing to do. If you put something that's meant for a lower voltage thing, like a, a tin wire connector, onto an output that's meant for high voltage. Yeah. Doesn't really like it. Rip dirt. Anyway, gold wire connector should work just fine. So we're upgrading from the tin, which is 32 EU per tick, to the gold, which supports 512 EU per tick. We're going from power tier 1 to 3. Now, let's toss out this garbage. Goodbye. Oh my god, I'm out of room again. These tin wire coils drive me just uh, up the wall. The fact that every time they break, they're all different lengths and they don't stack. Okay, now I need to be a little bit careful here. If I connect a higher voltage line to one of these machines without upgrading it, um, it probably will explode. So the extractor is the one I care about at the moment because I really, really desperately need it to make rubber. So let's throw the two transformer upgrades into this thing. All right, should be the right tier. Consumption three EU per tick. What? <laughs> they can't be right. It's not even doing anything. Anyway, gold wire connector. Gold wire relay. No explosion. Good. Um, I should be able to throw in the other um, overclocker upgrade, and it should be able to keep up with no problem at all. Of course, I actually need some rubber wood. Let me go grab some. Let's throw 22 rubber wood in, and it should have, yep, absolutely no problems keeping up with the power, even with the two overclocker upgrades. Okay, that's going to need make some precious rubber. I'm going to need a lot more than that, though. Right, so I'm just going to process a bunch of rubber so I can hopefully make the rest of the overclocker upgrades and upgrade all these other things. Uh, that's the power situation partially solved, except for the creation of the rest of the overclocker upgrades. However, we do still have a little bit of a problem. The basic energy cube is too basic. So this thing outputs at 80 EU per tick. This thing outputs at 512. So ideally I'd make a better energy cube that can output at a higher EU per tick. Um, let's see if we actually can make the better energy cubes though. So that was a basic. You know, I wish I told you what it output it at. You know, is the next one I want to go for the advanced, or do I want to go for the elite? Hopefully the next one would be okay. What in the hell is that? 
Uh, all right, so you need the basic cube, so kind of recycles the component. You actually need a transformer upgrade, interesting. Atomic alloy made in the metallurgic infuser. Okay, we don't have that. Glass fiber cable. We can do all that except for energium dust. What's that? Oh, I can do that. Redstone IO. Oh dear God, what's this? Microchip from open computers? Diamond chips? Transistor? Oh Christ. Maybe I'll upgrade that some other year. This is good enough for now. <laughs> I need to make some new machines and do tons of microcrafting to get a better mechanism cube. I'll settle for this. I swear those heavy cables kind of... They're like droopier. Don't they look droopier? They've got more of a curve to them than the, the other ones, the RF cables. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to make the rest of the transformer upgrades. Ah. <sighs> Okay, I've crafted 11 more. That's in addition to some that I've already put into the machines. That long sigh was because the amount of crafting and waiting and everything I had to do for this is... Oh man. I'm tired. <laughs> that was so tedious. I've spent over an hour just trying to make these transformer upgrades. And, well, mostly that, really. Okay, that one's got him, that one's got him, that one's got him, that one's got him. I try to make some extra so that hopefully we won't have to make more ever. Like literally ever. <laughs> hopefully. Okay, we got seven more. Alright, let me get all the connectors on all the machines. And this should be the final one. Yeah, alright. Everything's hooked back up. It feels good to get that done, but at the same time, man, I cannot wait to do something else. I never want to look at these machines again. Why am I still looking at them? Ew. Yeah, let's do something else. So, let's switch gears. I want to do something that's not automation related. Let's do something other than machines for a bit. One thing I have not done for a very long time is gardened. I want to both make my farm bigger and faster. However, I want to try doing that without using any machines. At least for the growing part. I'll probably use machines to harvest, I would imagine. But yeah, I'm going to try to make everything grow fast. Without using machines. I think if I did use machines, what I'd probably use is the forestry farming thing. So the forestry mod has this big like multi-block structure that you can make. It's kind of got like a cube controller in the center and then it spreads out and sort of like a circular kind of diamondy pattern away from that and it's that platform that spreads away from the center that gets dirt on it and you can plant whatever you want there and it can automatically fertilize using the if you remember the appetite ore that comes in huge veins you see it a lot on the surface of the mining dimension that's from forestry and that's what you use to make the fertilizer stuff it'll fertilize your plants super fast it stuff will grow like hell you can make it grow almost instantaneously but I've done that before, so I want to try something else. Instead of using machines, I want to use a combination of a bunch of non-machine things. So one thing is, hopefully I can continue to use the worms. I like my little worm buddies. And I want to combine that with... Ah, here we go. So I want to combine the worms with the fertilized dirt. That's dirt plus a bunch of bone meal plus some rotten flesh for some reason. Makes two pieces of fertilized dirt. I've never used this before, but um, I think it just kind of has a passive growth increase. Sort of like the worms, just makes stuff grow a bit faster. What I don't know is whether I can put the worms on top of fertilized dirt. I don't know. Hopefully I can. So hopefully worms plus fertilized dirt plus there's something called greenhouse glass. Yeah, so actually Additions has greenhouse glass. I've also never used this before. Uh, oh. Crap, what's that? Uh-oh. 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 
Okay, maybe that's not <laughs> maybe that's not happening. Could it happen? This is a bunch of no, this can't really happen. Not at a large scale, anyway. I could probably eventually make a little bit of it, but... I don't think I have any Prismarine. I'm not sure how to get Prismarine. And even if I did have Prismarine, I would need to make tons of Lapis Lazuli blocks. And I don't have a lot of Lapis. It's, for some reason, strangely rare. I think I have less than 100 Lapis. Hmm. Well, I've got an interesting kind of conundrum, then. Do I go ahead with the... Dirt? And the worms? Just those two? Well, l let's do a test. I'm gonna make just those two, see if the worms work on the dirt. And if they do, let's see how fast stuff grows. Okay, let's try this out. Got the fertilized dirt and a worm. Let's see if I can put the worm on it. Ah, you can't. Dang. Alright, well, I mean, maybe the fertilized dirt itself is super fast? I don't know. Let's try it. Uh. Wait. Oh, maybe I need to hoe it. I just assumed it, it was like auto-hoed, but maybe... Oh, okay. <laughs> it doesn't actually change the look, it just makes it get a little bit lower. Can you... Unhoe it by stomping on it like you can with normal stuff? No, doesn't look like it. Alright, the worm dream is alive. The worm dream is dead. Sorry, buddy. Oh, I don't think they can be put down on tilled grass. Oh! It's an Ender Mini! Hey, buddy. Duh! Oh no, it's getting attacked by bees! That's why it's taking damage and why it's pissed off. Oh no. Stop it, bees. Stop hurting my Ender Mini. No. I'm gonna save you. Ah. Ah, oh, you're okay. Jeez. God, it makes terrifying noises. Anyway, yeah, so worm's not gonna work. What the? What did that pop up? Huh? It can't be too close? It looks like it can only have... Uh, it looks like you can't have another plant on the cardinal directions. Oh. Or... Okay, I don't know what's going on, but uh, it seems that the fertilized dirt doesn't properly support Pam's harvest craft. I certainly don't want it pop popping out and destroying the plant. Yeah, that's no good. Okay. Well, this fertilized dirt's terrible. Alright, well, since it looks like that method of making a quick farm is not going to work, I guess I am going to go with the forestry multi-block structure. It is going to be quite convenient. It's going to grow stuff super fast, and it's automatically going to harvest it. And it can even, apparently, harvest rubber from rubber saplings. So it kind of fills that need, too. So I'm going to go for it. It's not too expensive. Do you know what that is? That's the fluid router having failed. What the hell? There's a pixel of water in there. That's so strange. Because this fluid router is like, it's quite clear. I don't see how this could possibly fail. And it's not as if the water is just going into this wholesale. Because if it was, this thing would fill up in minutes. It wouldn't have a tiny, tiny, minuscule amount. It would have a crap ton of water. I don't understand why it's doing that. Hmm. I'll figure it out some other time. Back to the farm. 
All right, so I think I've got everything together that I need to make the main structure of the, the farming station. So I'm going to make a 64 block. It's going to be a, what, 4 by... Uh, yeah, 4 by 4 by 4. So I'm going to need 64 of these farm blocks. It's not too bad. Bunch of copper, I got plenty of that. Stone bricks, easy. Slabs, easy. I guess the hardest thing would be the tin electron tubes, but those are also easy. Just a bunch of tin, some redstone. Each one of those makes four. And the thermionic fabricator. Super simple. And we're going to need more than just the farm blocks themselves. Those are kind of like the, the main building block, but we're going to need specialized blocks. So, yes, yeah, so let's convert some of these farm blocks into specialized blocks. Going to make two farm gear boxes, tin gears and farm blocks. These are the things that are going to actually take in the power, going to take in the RF power to do the work. The more gear boxes you hook up to the thing, the faster it is. Oh. Oh, I guess these dark oak trapdoors don't work for this recipe. One sec. These oak trapdoors should do. Yep. So we're going to convert these farm blocks into farm hatches. Uh, these are the things you use to input ingredients. So fertilizer, saplings, things like that. And also going to make a farm valve. This is the thing that takes in liquids. So to farm it needs water. So this is where the water is going to go. And finally, the brains of the operation is the farm control. All right, let me get those set up. So I took out all the crops. As sad as it was, it was also really, really satisfying. Uh, don't worry, I saved them all. Just toss them all in here. The saddest thing is I'm going to have to get rid of all this farmland and the worms. It's all right. It's not like I'm going to be killing the worms. They're just going to go into the earth and go deep underground. They're going to have an underground party. All right, so I think I'm going to put it there. And the range of this thing should be five in each direction. So in the cardinal directions, it's going to extend five blocks out. And then it kind of joins up with like a diamond shape in between the cardinal directions. Okay, so let's put this thing together. I've got the base layer down. And I want to replace one of these farm blocks with... Where is it? Farm valve. So that's going to take in the water. And it's going to be down below because I'm going to run the service tunnel from my base all the way here to transport the water. Then let's do a layer. Another layer. So we've got two layers. Uh, I think I'm going to do another full layer. And then at the top, let's put the two gearboxes, farm control, and a hatch. I'll put the farm control, I don't know, here? Too small, must be at least four blocks high. Yes? Oh, it's because I was trying to access it rather than just place it. I kind of wish this was a different dimension, because it's not oddly dimensioned. Nothing's going to be centered. Ah, well, it's fine. Um, let's have our power here. Farm hatches. I don't know. There for now. I can always move them. And boop. I think that's it. Let's see. Yes, this can't work, but this display means everything's here. Doesn't have any power, of course, but you can see the tank is here. That's the setup. This is where the fertilizer goes. This is where the like seeds that get planted go, and this is where the, the end product goes, I believe. Oh, you know what? I think... I'm going to need a farm hatch on the bottom, actually. Because I'm going to want to automatically extract everything that it gathers. I don't want to have to manually move it out. So let's put that in there as well. Yeah, that's fine. 
I'm gonna extract that from underground. And by the way, this lower this lowest level is not gonna be visible when this thing's done. A lot of this is actually gonna be hidden, so there's gonna be a whole layer of the sort of like support block on this level. Boop. And then on top of that support block is gonna be the dirt that the stuff is actually planted. So support block on this level, dirt on this level, and then the actual planted things will grow up here. Alright, let me get the support blocks laid out. There we go, so we got the cardinal directions going out five, and then in between those, you just connect them up with a diagonal. Running a power line to go over there now. Let's hook this thing up to some power. So I just gotta put connections on the gearboxes. Now, I don't think it's going to do anything because it doesn't have any materials. But it should have power. Yeah, so now now it's got power. Does it display... Oh, you got to mouse over the gearboxes themselves to see how much power it's got. Each one holds 10,000. But yeah, now it's got no fertilizer, so... It's got to get a bunch of stuff. It needs dirt, it needs fertilizer, things like that. Let's make a bunch of fertilizer. It's just one appetite and two sand equals eight fertilizer, so it's super cheap to make. Let's make a full stack of this stuff. Alright, so now that's good. Now it's like, awesome! I've got fertilizer, but I've got no water. So let me dig that service tunnel over to here. Well, if I've written these coordinates down correctly, if I dig up, it should take me to the bottom of the farm. Aha! Uh -huh. Perfect! <laughs> Although, I need to dig a little bit more to the side, don't I? But yeah, that's most of it. There's the tank. I'm missing the, uh, the hatch thing. But um, let me make a bunch of pipe and run a long, long water pipe all the way over to it. Uh-oh. Yeah, I should probably light up this tunnel, huh? Alright, just a couple more pieces of pipe. I've used probably two stacks of pipe. When I connect this, it should fill up with water. What the? Just a rendering error, don't worry. Alright, let's go check. I love gliding. Oh, I also put dirt down. Yep, there we go. Just saw it fill up to the brim right before I got here. Okay, so... Oh yeah, I guess how much water it requires is dependent on various factors. Humidity and heat and stuff like that. Temperature's normal, apparently. Yeah, so I think this thing's mostly ready to go. I think, I think I need to put a circuit of some sort in here. Uh, by default, I think it will only do trees. And I think I need to put something in here. So the way this socket thing works is we need to use a soldering iron. And uh, get out of here. Give me your pants. Marginally better than my current ones. So this, the way the socket works is we need to use the soldering iron to solder these tubes to this intricate circuit board. So these are separate items, open up this, and then you put the circuit board inside of it, and then pick which tubes you want to use and choose a category. And this is basically configuring what each side of the farm is going to do. So it's divided into four different sides, each direction, northeast, southwest. So you can kind of have distinct things on each side, and you don't have to build a separate farm just to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to want to do not an automatic farm, but a manual farm, I believe. So I can choose what I want for each side. Now here's where I'm a little bit confused. I don't know what type of tube I need for Pam's Harvest Craft. There's two that could fit. There's... 
tells you what they're for. So this one's for a rubber plantation. So I'm going to put one of those in there for the rubber trees. Um, bronze, it says for manual farms, it's for crop farm. I'm thinking Pam's Harvest Craft might be crop farm. However, there is also a tube for vegetables. So I don't know which one I want. Maybe I want crops and vegetables. I don't really know. I don't get the distinction exactly. It seems like crops would include all vegetables and vegetables would just be a subset of crops. I don't know. <laughs> we can always redo it if it doesn't work. So, manual farm. Let's put a rubberized one in. And then the rest will be crop farm. There we go. Alright, let's plop that in. You can see it's changed. Now I think... I'm not sure if it's going to get to work right now tilling the land. Because it's manual, I think I might have to till it myself. Okay, yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> you know what? I guess I could probably put worms here, huh? Huh, it's not watering it. I might have to set up the water myself. I'm not sure. I've never done a manual farm in forestry. I've only done an automatic one, but I'm pretty sure... I mean, you actually need to do a manual farm to do the the rubber plantation, so this is definitely what I want to do. But let's just try planting some stuff. Cauliflower? Nah. Soybeans. Alright. Grow. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. So that, is, that grew already way faster than it normally would, that's because of the fertilizer, probably. But yeah, it is definitely not watering the ground, so I am going to have to handle that on my own. Which means I guess I'm going to have to actually... Well, yeah, I'll just use worms. Problem solved. So let me go get a bunch of worms. Alright, got 22 wormies. I love these worms. Why can't I put you down here? It won't let me put them down there. Strange. Yeah, I can't, I can't put them down here either. That's so odd. Huh. Well, I'll figure that out later. Alright, so has this thing been harvesting? No. I don't think it's been using the fertilizer. I wonder if it's actually unable to use fertilizer on Pam's harvest craft stuff. It's possible. I'm not sure. Or it could just be that these are the wrong types, because they're set to uh, crop instead of vegetable. I don't know. We just don't know. I'm going to plant a bunch of these. Yeah, if these were getting fertilizer, they should be growing a lot faster. Uh, let me try putting something that I know is considered a crop. And let's see how it treats that. So let's try wheat. Oh, wait a minute. What side am I doing this on? I just realized one of the sides is rubber plantation. North, right? Oh, okay, so that's this side. So this side definitely won't support any vegetables. Okay, so that should get the fertilizer, I think. Unless a manual farm just doesn't work the way I thought it did. I thought it needed fertilizer, even even if it's manual. I thought the only thing manual didn't do is plant the initial plant. 
And also water. Yeah, I can't tell if this is the fertilizer or the worms doing the work, but I don't know. It seems awfully slow from what I remember. It looks like we have an additional problem. I don't think crop is the right one, because even though these are fully grown, it's not harvesting them. And that's definitely not right. Though I am curious, let's see if it actually will harvest seeds, because it really, really should. Okay, it does. Oh, does it not plant them? Did it just replant it, or did it just break another one? I think it replanted it. What if I put a bunch in here? Okay. So it does plant. If it plants automatically, then how is this manual? I don't really understand the distinction between manual and automatic. It seems almost the same. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this is definitely the wrong type. So, um... How do I uninstall this? There is a way to uninstall it, I'm, I'm sure of that. Maybe I use like the soldering iron on it? Ah, okay, so apparently you go into here and you click the soldering iron onto that. There we go. Alright, so let's replace these. So, a manual. And it just... It just takes out all the, the tubes, you gotta put them all back in again and you lose the old ones, but it's fine, they're pretty cheap to make. So, rubber. And the iron electron tubes are for vegetable farms, so let's hope that works with Pam's Harvest Craft. I'm like 95% sure, by the way, that this mod will work with Pam's Harvest Craft, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, boop. Alright, there we go. Alright, so it should... Yep, there we go. It definitely didn't harvest them the way I wanted it to, though. Hmm. Because normally the way you harvest it is with, a like, a right click. And it doesn't destroy the plant. That did destroy the plant. I'm not sure what to do about that. I mean, I know I could replant by doing this, right? Uh, what? Shit. Well. Ah, uh huh. It doesn't want to take them back in to replant them. It's definitely got some compatibility issues with Bam's Harvest Craft. Maybe I should look if Forestry has an update. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I've got to review my options. If I set it to an automatic farm, I wonder if it would behave any better. It probably wouldn't. Because I was hoping what I could do is just make it so I could put maybe like just a two by two, just like four of each type of crop. You know, this will be soybeans, this will be tomatoes, and so on. Just a little bit of each. And then I would just harvest them but leave them still there and just harvest them when they come to fruition. But if it destroys them, even if I got this working so that I could put the soybeans back inside of this, it would still just plant soybeans everywhere, not just in that little tiny place I put. I'm not sure what to do about this. Well, I think I'm going to research if forestry has an update and... Maybe read more about its interactions with Pam's Harvest Craft if I can. And, yeah, I'll get back to you with what I learned in the next episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to push ahead with my farm.